welcome to episode 10 of Africanists Assemble, which marks the beginning of our second year and a second season for our vodcast. For this episode, we wanted to go back to some basics and find out why in the world someone might want to study Afrikanistik, the German term for the field of African languages and literatures, or African studies at all. Thus, we asked our contributors this question. Let's pretend that you're approached by a brand new high school graduate who isn't sure what to major in, and they ask you what it is you like about Africanistic slash African studies so much. What do you tell them? Here's how they replied. Nivini na kulodri wama man lwe ani ma kulumeli ayen. Sigulu mwan avuti sil ma kwen wamina shaku agala kumpusha la hii. Ma kwen wamina amshamulila ako angashi ranzi kuya mimintini ya vana. Na kulo jilwe, ahila ya gwala mamana wa mena, desha ku mwana wa yena, ili yena, ninjangu ya yena, ivanu. Isha kangofu, ili shinjangu inu wa yena, ikuwa, shilava kakubula shinyingi. Impela nabu nabu ivanu, kambi, ili shi, anga alawa kubula shona. Iku, kuni vanu, inga vanu, ni lava, inga vanu ngofu. Lava, injangu, si, Ima kaleyu, venge patiwi, ni vanu vangwana. Pra karada kukombi santa mwa le shinibulaka, yukuba ni nklantla maridu mungi mafana na mangafana. Hii hina ima maa kale shoku maridu mungi mafana. Yukusa ilava kutishenga, yukuluma imisava ya kufana, ni kukala yinga chinji, yunge yiyo, tkatamitiliwa lehe, tla yuguloi. Ala nukuni makai kulu ya kusaseka yinga kulumiwa ikuwazi uridu. Muranzi wa utivi wa kumwale gana wa kufasushi. Luku akuluma ilishwe angete shaku yala kutantliwa. Na alaba kubula le shaku lirimi la hina lini magamu hitelu lingu. Niku hitelu lingwane kulawa le shaku hipfumela magamu lao. Kuhitativa leshi itivaka kambi ngupu ngupu kutiva leshi hinga shipi maki. Se inaka kufunda tiri mita Afrika kumbi mchumu ya Afrika. Shifana ni kususiwa ilumu hinga tatseka. Alirimi la hina li ishenga iku hativa hinku asu leshi hishu itivaka. La hinga afanela kukota kwa ziwiridu. Ingi kukota kulava ilanza au tivi. Kuni mtibu mwanu wako mamali ama duu ampati ba henge luku kutiva shwako au tivi utativa. Se impela kutiva ayu kutiva shwako shwili shi tamsile shi kutiva yu kutiva shwako kutamisale shi kufisha msava yungwani ikalaka hinga yungu. Kufunda shwili shwa Afrika Inge la lei yingo doi kumbwa kubasini. Inga la kubasini wa kushanisa ni wa manyanga. Kambi kubasini kashi chavo. Kutafika siku ungo wana vanu wa Afrika na vati lekele. Si ukuboshanya. Kuwe yuwena ukalaka kubwana lesu shi vati lekisaka. Kusulawa wa kushanya yuwena. The question is, what do I like about African studies and why would I recommend this field to someone else? From my experience, that is looking at the people that have shaped my research and the people I work with, African studies is remarkable for the networks it forges across the globe. This field collapses the boundary between the North and South because researchers on either side are always collaborating in some project or other. For instance, some of the biggest African studies projects are housed in institutions in the North and, obviously, the raw data which consistently generates new excitement in the field is located in the South. As such, bodies of knowledge and people constantly crisscross this divide. I have also come to admire the humility with which most African studies scholars approach the subjects of their research. There is an inherent open-mindedness, if I can say so. This allows researchers to factor in different voices into the practice, leading to rich, 
multi-perspectival research. In connection with this, I like how broad the field of African studies is. It is inexhaustible. It is also unbounded, refusing to be contained in erroneously defined boundaries. It is quite interesting that you want to know what I like about Afghanistic or Afghan studies. You've just finished high school. Did they tell you what Afghan studies is all about? It is important to explain to you what it is before I tell you what I like about it. Africanistic or Afghan studies is broadly the study of various aspects of Africa, such as African culture, arts, languages, history, politics, economy, philosophy, and religion. It is in fact about knowing Africa and Afghan societies in totality. I would argue that Africanistic or Afghan studies is fundamentally important given the long history of colonialism and slavery which in many ways not only subjugated but also falsified the cultures, histories and mode of knowing Africa. As such, Africanistic and African studies provide a new and alternative way of knowing and reconfiguring Africa. As such, what I like most about African studies is that it enables me to understand and appreciate Africa, mainly through my encounter with African literature and theatre. Through colonial literature, I can clearly design how these writings defined and represented Africa. Whilst an engagement with postcolonial writings that deconstruct the other's way of seeing and defining Africa makes it possible for me to have a better insight of Africa. In fact, these postcolonial writings constitute for me the very project of decolonizing and more importantly, debunking the other's versions of Africa that deny Africa its culture, history, literature, and urgency. For me, African studies is encapsulated in the Swahili saying that goes as follows. Mochamila ni mtumwa, translated as one who abandons his culture is a slave. Indeed, African studies is important to me personally because it enables me to define myself outside the definition of the other. And as a court public beautifully put it, the pumpkin in the old homestead must not be uprooted. African studies connects us with Africans' way of knowing and being. And that is why it is extremely important to me. Now, when you join university, you should be able to decide if you want to do African studies because it is extremely important in helping you to define yourself. One approach by a brand new student who is unsure of taking a major in Africanistic studies, I'll be glad to let the student know that the field of Africanistic studies is not restricted to its structural approach, but rather it gives insights into other fields such as history, political science, sociology, anthropology, music, and even digital media. It seeks to place the production of knowledge side by side with Western knowledge. The study of Africanistic seeks to address the question of what language means to many. Figlio mio, magari sapessi perché mi sono ritrovato a studiare africanistica. L'Africa mi è interessato da sempre, sin da quando ero bambino. Per me era la terra del viaggio, della scoperta, della musica meravigliosa, di un'emozione che mi aspettava. E... È vero, avrei potuto studiare altro, trovarmi un buon lavoro, visitare da turista, ma non avrei conosciuto neanche una lingua africana. Mi sarei dovuto barcamenare col mio inglese o francese sgangherato. Su un sulla soglia di un continente che volevo conoscere per questo ho scelto africanistica non so se questa sarà la scelta della vita o se nel futuro cambierò totalmente come persona ma sicuramente l'Africa doveva entrare è di prepotenza nel mio percorso nel mio percorso esistenziale mettiamola così quindi per rispondere alla tua domanda non c'è bisogno di chiedermi cosa c'è di bello nell'africanistica se l'Africa non ti interessa o ti interessa solo fino a un certo punto è più sensato studiare altro se invece questo continente ti ha sempre appassionato al punto che ti chiedi per quale motivo ne sei così attratto l'africanistica è assolutamente la scelta giusta e se in futuro dovessi pentirti di questa scelta pensa che nella vita si può sempre cambiare anche lavoro e interessi e in ogni modo quello che ha preso non andrà perduto buona vita First of all, I would begin by explaining or asking the question, 
What is African Studies all about? Now, African Studies are studies whose focus is Africa from different or diverse disciplines or from different perspectives. It is a scholarship on Africa, about Africa, and in Africa. Now, one thing that makes this area of study fascinating to me as a literary scholar is that it is possible for me to know more about Africa and its diversity through various narratives, through artistic forms that emerge from the continent. To cite one example is life writings, or what we call autobiographical writings. I have studied life writings from Africa with specific focus on autobiographical writings from Kenya, written by prominent personalities. Through these texts, it is possible to not only know more about the experiences of the individual authors, but one gets an opportunity to know more about the societies of those respective authors. Moreover, the different personalities offer different perspectives through which we can begin to understand the sociocultural diversity of the communities or nations where these people come from. The other thing that I am fascinated and passionate about are literatures written in African languages. Now, such works enable me to know more about the linguistic diversity of the African continent. At the same time, when such works are translated, they become accessible to wider audiences, enabling the different languages within the continent and outside to interact or to get in sort of a dialogue. Thus, it becomes an opportunity to even understand and know more about different African societies through these works that have been authored in different African languages. In that sense, therefore, as a literary scholar, I become or I consider myself a student of linguistics, a student of culture, history, politics, religion, and other humanities, thus giving me an opportunity to understand the richness of Africa and its people. I will first of all start by admitting that it's a bit confusing considering how much diversity is in Africa and how much is it in Africa to be studied. So Africa, first of all, that is so rich in its culture is something I will start by advising a student, the high school graduate, to, to venture in. First of all, because I want to limit myself to two areas, looking at the culture, maybe through anthropology, you could use anthropology to study the culture, or sociology to study the African culture maybe choosing one of the African countries, one or two of the African countries to do your measuring. There's an area that you want to know because when we talk about culture, culture in itself, it's very broad and there will be so much to venture in and be able to get more ideas in your studies. Another area of diversity and beauty is the African linguistic area. Africa has got a, a beautiful diversity when it comes to language, not like the other parts of the world have been minimized in terms of their language diversity. But as we all know, Africa is a pot of languages. So in this, I will also advise the student to get to this area because it's so it's an interesting area, an area where in the process of you even studying, in the process of you doing your research, you also enrich your language portfolio as you get to learn different languages. What do we say about a continent that in just a single region has got more than a hundred languages? There will be so much to be studied and so much to be learned uh, in terms of uh, linguistics. So I will look at these two areas and advise this uh, high school graduate to look at these areas if you want to do african studies you could also measure in linguistic you could also measure in anthropology and also sociology if you want to leave aside linguistic and you want to look at culture more 
yes, then you could look at anthropology and sociology. But in terms of linguistic, trust me, it's so rich. And as a student, you might love it. African Studies offers the student a bell critical analysis of African societies. It also gives a deeper and broader understanding of issues in African research so that a student who has gone through this program can be able to carry out incisive research. As an interdisciplinary program, African Studies offers the student a multidimensional outlook to African issues and a critical approach to research. Masomo katika taaluma za Kiafrika ni masomo ambayo yanaangazia isimu na fasihi kwa lugha za Kiafrika. Hapa tunazungumzia isimu, miundo yake na mifanyiko yake kwa upande mmoja na kwa upande wa pili tuna fasihi ambayo inajumuisha fasihi simulizi na fasihi andishi. Katika fasihi andishi tunajumlisha kazi za tafsiri ambazo zimetafsiriwa kutoka kwa lugha za kigeni hadi kwa lugha za Kiafrika kama vile Kiswahili. Mwanafunzi ambaye anapitia mfumo wa masomo ya taaluma za Kiafrika ataweza kupata fursa ya kuzamia na kubobea katika fasihi na isimu za lugha za Kiafrika zikiwemo Kiswahili, Kiyoruba, Kihausa, Kihosa na Kizulu miongoni mwa lugha nyingine nyingi za Kiafrika. Masomo ya taaluma za Kiafrika hayajifungi tu na isimu na fasihi lakini pia yanachunguza tamaduni mbalimbali za Kiafrika na masomo ya mawasiliano yanayofungamana na mbinu na mitazamo ya Kiafrika. Jambo la muhimu hapa ni kwamba mwanafunzi atapata nafasi ya kusomea sio tu miundo ya kiisimu ya lugha za Kiafrika au dhana na tanzu za fasihi hizo bali ataweza kutathmini na kudadisi jinsi fasihi na isimu zinavyojenga na kuumba upya ulimwengu wa jamii za Kiafrika. Katika muktadha huo, jamii za Kiafrika zinasomwa na kumulikwa sio kama jamii zilizojitenga, bali katika muingiliano na mtagusano na jamii nyingine nyingi za kilimwengu ndani na nje ya bara la Afrika. Uchunguzi wa taaluma na maarifa ya Kiafrika katika mtazamo huo mpana unatoa nafasi ya kubadilishana maarifa, ujuzi na tajriba katika kiwango cha kimataifa hali ambayo unazikuza na kuziendeleza taaluma hizo. Kwa hivyo, taaluma za Kiafrika zinachangia pakubwa katika mfanyiko mpya wa Afrika na uzalishaji wa maarifa katika karne hii ya moja. My first thing would say African studies is not only about the study of a geography of the African continent and its diversity. African studies involves looking at a continent and a people from an African perspective. It is for me and what I love about it is the epistemology, the science of knowing, how we know what we know, and the fact that the western mode of knowledge and knowing is not the only way of knowing, that there are different types of knowing. And African studies provides one with this non-Western way of knowing. For instance, wealth from an African studies perspective is not defined by material things alone, but is also defined by people, the wealth in people. And it is where you begin to see that the wealth of Africa, both the material resources, the various elements, the various things that are used to power the the west but the people themselves are also an interesting note when you look at um, ali mazuri he talks about the ocean being a source of of resource not a source of navigation to go and conquer another people the history of the african continent is so rich the diversity and the number of languages that are spoken from one place to another it is a field that Asante talks about africology and that you can use that methodology to approach the world. When a bird flies, it needs two wings. 
coming into the African Studies Department or Center or Studies will give you that robust and groundedness in viewing the world, in seeing differences in the world. And that's why I like African Studies. If I were talking with a high school graduate about why I love African Studies, I'd talk about the interdisciplinarity of African studies, how it affords room for scholars working in many different fields of study to think through questions of all kinds. I'd say I love it also because especially right now, it's a dynamic field and it's very engaging to watch a field change before your eyes and to be part of such transformations. I'd probably talk a little about my own experience as an undergraduate African studies major when I thought a lot about the question of what major to choose. A couple of evenings before I got this question, I was thinking about the late wonderful history of art scholar Sylvia Boone and my experience as a first semester undergraduate in her course, Women in African Art. Her lectures and writing were so smart, so insightful and really beautifully constructed. And in that course, I for the first time thought about beauty as a mobile mutable idea about how the notion of it shifts across cultures, how for each culture there's a story for the formation of that concept, how learning one such story in Mende culture, for example, creates insight into a particular culture, yes, but also to the idea of culture generally. I remember how I looked at women's magazines in the US differently after learning about beauty in Mende culture in Sylvia Boone's class. I love the tendency and the power of African studies to raise questions about basic terms and concepts often taken as given. There's a lot of what the scholar Walter Mignolo calls epistemic disobedience. For example, in the term literary translation, a term I work with a lot, what exactly qualifies as literary and who decides? And over time, who was deciding? Where did this category come from? And has it operated as a term of exclusion? And if so, how and where exactly? And for that matter, translation, how might the starting point for understanding the idea and the act of translation differ in a profoundly multilingual culture like Tanzania's, to take just one example, from in a seminar room of a university in the United States? In African studies, there's a self-questioning and a reflective practice that creates insight. And this insight is portable. You can carry it with you to your thinking everywhere. This is what I would tell our high school graduate. And there is often a culture of collegiality and community that encourages and supports learners in this. Those were our contributors' answers. Did you agree with their assertions? Would you have answered the question differently? Tell us about it in the comments below. Thanks for joining us for episode 10. If you'd like to know when our next episode is published, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon below. See you next time. Rabbi Motewul, I said I'm walk or rapper if he can you none your papa boy. Down be rap the fide, a parsaka, I'm not this be my new duckal joy. Need a deaf on you, ludil the top on door. The auto moon will get out some no. Rap can be out of him up on door. Some my lyrics, it dope till a two kilo. I'm thinking I walk like them on the mokoi death. For ye kunda rap like man masses and chef. Mangi si jam, walk on you my hair. The rap na si jang fi iji do jam. My bin the kati, bin the kati. Did this bitch you do like the hell? Hell. And then I'm going to give it My death difference with the Messi Hey! I'm going to give you a lot of money